call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st precinct. All right, I'll tell you what you can do. You better come into the station house and talk to the detectives. Yes, sir. There's someone up there all night. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their persons, their homes, and their property is my job. My job and the job of the 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour. At 5.50 p.m., I walked out of my office into the muster room where Lieutenant Gorman was desk officer and Sergeant Burns was on telephone switchboard duty. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. Hello, Captain. Sergeant? You don't have to ring in to ask me that, Captain. Well, walk by there again. See they're home now. Well, I go on patrol now, Lieutenant. These rooks ring in every time they want to take a deep breath. Didn't you, Sergeant? <laughs> yes, sir, I... I guess I did. Sergeant, have sector car number three come by the house for the captain. Going on patrol. Yes, sir, right away. All right, step right up to the desk, mister. CB, this is Sergeant. Uh, I'd like to get a little information. Yes, sir. Well, seven, well seven, it's two, a long four, story. Seven, I'd just like to know what to do about okay. it. Do about what? Well, about six, eight weeks ago, on the 26th of August to be exact, I came home from work. And my wife was in the living room and she had company. Another woman, a girl about 20 or 21. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who she was, and there were introductions all around. My wife said she was Mrs. Lois Heppel. Anyway, this Mrs. Heppel had a baby with her. Baby boy, about nine months. His name is Richie, the baby. 722. Well, so I sit there wondering when supper is going to go on the table and what this Mrs. Heppel is doing. Now, Cora, that's my wife, brings it on me. We're taking in a paying guest, the baby. That hits me between the eyes. But I'm polite about the whole thing. I take Cora into the kitchen. I ask her, what's this all about? Are you going nuts? But she gives me a long song and dance about how another lady she met in a delicatessen told her about Mrs. Heppel was looking for some place to board the baby for a couple of months. Well, Cora is dying. I have the kid in the house. She won't take no for an answer. So to make a long story short, we took in a baby. Well, what do you want us to do about it? Well, I'm not asking you to do anything about it. All I'm asking for is a little information. Uh, did this Mrs. Heppel pay you anything? That's just the point. And my wife made an agreement that we would board the baby for $12.50 a week. So when she left the kid with us, she gave us $37.50 to cover the first three weeks. She said she would either come by the house or send us the money before the three weeks was up. Uh -huh. Well, how much has she sent you since? Nothing. Not one lousy cent. That's what I'm so burned up about. We got the kid. We haven't heard a word from her. Not a single word. Oh, I see. So what I'd like to know is what am I supposed to do? What's your name? Me? Wygan, Harry Wygan. How do you spell that? W-I-G-A-N. Yeah, come by the station house. Captain's going on patrol. All right, where do you live? Uh, 502 York Avenue. Uh, are, are you the captain here? Yes, that's right. I'm Captain Kennelly. Well, I'm, I'm glad to know you. Look, is there something that can be done? Where do I go? Who do I see? Well, there uh, might be something that can be done, Mr. Wygan. Uh, this child uh, or the mother is not related to either you or your wife. Related? I've never seen either of them before in my life. I've seen the woman just that once in my living room when I came home from work. Uh, this woman, the mother... Mrs. Uh, Heppel. Lois Heppel. Uh, she agreed to pay you twelve fifty a week to board the child? Yeah, that's right. twelve fifty a week. Oh, I told my wife, I told her, Cora, twelve fifty a week to take in a kid is nothing today. Nothing. It'll cost more than that just expenses out of the pocketbook. But she's got to have the kid. She's got to have him. I couldn't even reason with her. How long have you been married? Sixteen years. Any children of your own? No, 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 no children. Uh, not that we didn't want any, her especially, but uh, it was just one of those things, the way it worked out. There was no children. What did this Mrs. Heppel tell your wife? What do you mean? Well, I mean, why did she have to board the baby in a foster home? Oh, well, she said that she had the chance of a pretty good job in one of those airplane factories out in Long Island. That she wanted to take the job, but that she couldn't do that and take care of the kid, too. Mm -hmm. She wanted to take the job so she could save up some money. Did she give you the address where she'd live out on the island? She said she'd send it when she got settled. Well, did she send it? Yeah, just like she sent the 12 a week. Did this Mrs. Heppel live with her husband? I don't even know that she had one. 
I asked the people in the building where she was staying there. They never saw any husband around there. Well, did she leave any forwarding address at the building? Nothing, nothing. She just left. And she owes you approximately four weeks' board. Approximately, just about. All right, Mr. Wigan. You and your wife bring the child into the station house. If what you told us can be substantiated, we... Oh, it could be substantiated, all right. Well, then the mother's guilty of abandonment. You make your complaint here, and we'll see that the child is taken care of. I'll be in my office, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Thanks, Captain. Uh, thanks a lot. Listen, uh, Captain. Yes? All right. I, uh, I just want you to know that I got nothing against the little fella. He's all right. But I just hate being made a chump out of it. You know what I mean? I understand, Mr. White. It's just a rotten, lousy thing for that mother to do, and I ain't going to be the sucker in the deal. Uh, how does your wife feel about it? Well, it don't make any difference how she feels about it. I'm the guy that's paying the bills. And I got enough to pay with $63.34 a week take-home pay without worrying about somebody else's obligation. All right, Mr. Morgan. You and your wife come into the station house with the child. We'll get it all straightened out. Yeah, well, I'll go home right now and get him. Well, you can wait until tomorrow if the baby's asleep. You've had him this long. Another night won't make any difference. Uh, to you, I know it don't make any difference, Captain. To me, it's plenty of difference. A few minutes after Harry Wagon left the station house, sector car number three came by to take me on patrol of the precinct. I had the operator, Patrolman Mercado, drive me to a political rally on 76th Street where all the candidates for city council from the A.D. were speaking from the same platform. The crowd was not large, and the number of patrolmen assigned to the job was more than adequate. Before returning to the station house, we made a swing of the south end of the precinct by way of York Avenue, where we saw sector car number one parked at the curb. We stopped. That must be it, Captain, 502. Mm. There's Eisman coming out. Eisman. Oh, hello, Captain. What do we got? Nothing much, sir. When we rang in, the sergeant told us to take a turn by here. Neighbor called in at a couple of scrapping family fight. Neighbor thought he was beating her up. Was he? Oh, no, sir. I went up and talked to him. They weren't drinking. Nice enough couple. Said they were just having an argument. Calmed down by the time we got there. Something about their baby. I told them if they had to argue to keep it down low enough so the neighbors wouldn't have to call the cops. What's the name of the couple? Uh, Wigan, Captain. Mr. and Mrs. Harry Wigan. What floor are they on? Uh, second floor front, Captain. But it's all settled. They've quieted down. I know him. I want to talk to him. Oh. And back on the job, Eisman. Yes. Mercado. Yes, sir. You wait down here. Yes, sir. The building was old, but well kept. No one was in the hall. The other neighbors didn't know there was a disturbance, so they'd been coaxed behind their own doors by the patrolman on the job. Yeah, who is it? Captain Kennelly. Who? Captain Kennelly, 21st Precinct. Oh. All right. Well, there's no trouble, Captain. Everything is fixed up. You didn't have to come. I uh, was just passing by. Oh. Is uh, that Mrs. Wigan? Yeah, that's Mrs. Wigan. Well, come in, Captain. Thank you. It's the first time. First time since we were married that we fought like that. Arguments, yeah, but not fights like this. Cora? Cora, this is Captain Kennelly, the captain I spoke to at the police station. How do you do, Miss Wigan? How do you do? I'm sorry it was my fault. I screamed. It was me. Harry tried to keep me quiet. Well, it's all over now. He said you told him to bring me and the baby to the police station. Is that right? If the baby's been abandoned. Well, I'm taking care of him. I'm taking good care of him. Cora, we've been through that. We've been through that time and time again till it's coming out of my ears. It's the truth. Captain, a cold can of beer. I got so many ice spots. Uh, no, no thanks. We couldn't keep him here anyway. How many times have I got to say it? I am not going to be the chump in this deal. Not me. So wake him up. If he didn't wake up from what went on before, he won't wake up now. Would you like to see him, Captain? Cora. He's such a fine boy. Uh, don't wake him, Miss Wagner. We won't wake him. This way. You stay here, Harry. Don't worry. You ever see such a butterball? I love it. You don't know how I love it. How many children do you have, Captain? Three. Three? Three is a nice family. Yes, 
everybody except me. I always wondered why everybody except me. Don't ask foolish questions. Harry says we have to bring him to the police station tomorrow. What will you do? Well, we'll try to find the mother, place charges of abandonment against her. What about him, Richie? The New York Fondling Home. It's a very fine institution. Oh, no. Well, he's not your responsibility, Mrs. Wagon, if the mother abandoned him. Just because the mother abandoned him, is that a reason for me to abandon him? Laura, we've been through all that. We've been all through it so much the neighbors had to call in a police. Now, please. Harry, give me some light. The answer is, has been, and always will be no, no, and oh. That day made a monkey out of him. I'm not thinking of her. I'm thinking of him. He's got nothing to do with it. She's not going to get away with it. That kid gets turned over tomorrow. Now, folks, let's settle down. It's settled down and it's settled. Tomorrow, bright and early. It was settled. The husband made the decision. The wife had apparently resigned herself to it. She sat down on the couch and stared down at the floor. I said goodnight to each of them and left. Downstairs on the street, Sergeant Collins' car had pulled up behind my own. Patrolman Mercado was standing on the sidewalk talking to the sergeant, explaining the nature of the trouble in the house. I joined them. Because it was a quiet night in the precinct, I decided to accompany Sergeant Collins on an inspection tour of cabarets. When I returned to the station house and walked up the front steps into the muster room, a wildly gesticulating man was standing in front of the desk trying to make himself understood. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. No comprendo. Uh, uh, Hable uh, despacio. Uh, Repeatalo. What's the trouble, Sergeant? That's what we're trying to find out, Captain. He just... Hey, me dijo, yeah, all right, all right, hold it. Party, party, party. It's been a long time since high school Spanish, Captain. Well, did you call upstairs to the detectives? Is Hernandez on the job tonight? Yes, sir, he's working, but he's out on patrol. Mm-hmm. They're trying to locate him. I think he's trying to tell me he was robbed. Um... Look, uh, uh, como uh, se llama usted? Protea. Tremendo organza protea. Okay. Ella y su amigo lo cogieron yeah. todo. Look, wait a Ella minute. Una uh, just a second. Uh, pare, pare. Uh, uh, hable más despacio. Sí, sí. <laughs> um, uh, enséñame uh, sus papeles. Papeles, ahí yeah. están. You're not doing bad, Lieutenant. Well, he's had a lot more practice than I have. He is going to show you his wallet. Yo soy yeah. marinero. Mi barco está en Oboken. Me robaron una muchacha. Wait a minute. Un momento. Un momento. Sí, huh? sí. Uh, I think he's a merchant seaman. I think that's what this card says, anyhow. Uh, look, uh, uh, ¿cuál uh, es su uh, nacionalidad? Nacionalidad? Yeah. Sudamericano. Argentino. Ah, uh, he's from the Argentine. Excuse me. Um... Uh, Paul left to uh, Barco. Wait, the Barco is a young man, Recalde. Recalde. Ask him if he's heard. Oh, yes, sir. Um, oh, I think. Estaro so. said, um, Erito. Si, sí, señor, okay. malamente. Okay, yeah, he we'll, is. Uh, we'll keep him here. Me dieron un golpe en el cuello. Yeah. Me dieron con un palo. All right, all right, hold it. Party. Party. Uh, party. Hey, he located the detective Fernandez. He's on his way anyhow. Oh, brother, that's good. Como recobre mi dinero. Yeah, yeah, party. Espere, espere un momento. Look, detective. Uh, detective, uh, quiere hacerle algunas uh, preguntas uh, uh, very soon. Are you busy, Captain? Can I see a minute? Oh, hello, Mr. Wagon. Yo quiero mi dinero. Yeah, yeah, important, Captain. Right. All right, Mr. Wagon. Más que cien dólares. I'll be in my office, Captain. Yes, sir. Right. Come into my office, Mr. Wagon. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thanks. Well, what's the trouble, Mr. Wagon? He's gone. My wife. She's gone and she took the kid with her. When did she leave? I don't know. I thought it was all settled. We were going to bring the kid in here tomorrow. I went to bed. You know, I got to get up early to go to work. Cora said she'd go sit in the living room a while. And she left after you fell asleep? Yeah, that's right. She just took the baby and she left. Well, have you any idea where she went? No, I don't have any idea at all. When did you discover she was gone? I don't know. I'm usually a sound sleeper, very sound, but I guess I just thought that something was wrong. I woke up and she wasn't in the bed. I went out into the living room and into the kids' room and she wasn't there. Well, does she have any relatives she could have gone to? That's the funny part of it. Not a soul. A sister in Boston. That's all the relatives she's got. What about friends? Well, it was so late I, I didn't feel like calling anybody. Is there anyone in the building she could have gone to? I thought maybe she had done that at first. And then I looked in the closet. She took her winter coat and bundled up the baby with some heavy blankets we had there. So I figured that she wasn't going to anyone in the building. How about a hotel? I don't think so. She didn't take any money. Nothing? Well, payday's tomorrow. She didn't have only a couple of dollars left. She left a couple of dollars right on a dresser. She took it out of her pocketbook and left it right on a dresser. 
Captain, I don't think she took a cent with her. Not a cent. That's what worries me. You're positive she didn't go to a friend. Can't be positive, but I don't think so. Well, you ought to check some of your friends in the neighborhood. Well, I wouldn't want to do that, Captain. I, I've been in enough trouble tonight. It's late already. They all got to get up early in the morning. I wouldn't want to wake any of them up. Well, she didn't have any money with her, Mr. Wagon. That's where you're going to find her, I think. Well, Captain, don't you think I was right? I mean, why should we be chumps and take on somebody else's obligations like that? Uh, I can see that she likes the kid. She loves him. I, I, I like him, too. But her mother made a, a sucker out of us. She just played us for, for chumps. She knew she wasn't coming back when she left the kid. I just don't go for that kind of deal. Your wife seemed happy enough with it. Well, there's got to be somebody in the family that looks out for your rights. There's got to be somebody that sees you don't get stepped on. Listen, Captain, I'm worried to death. What can I do? If you don't want to contact your friends tonight, the only thing you can do is wait until morning. Well, that seems like an awful long time, Captain. An awful long time. Mr. Wigan finally took my suggestion and went home to bed. In the meantime, we notified the CB and the Missing Persons Bureau. An alarm was put out over the teletype to every precinct in the city of New York, giving a description of Cora Wigan and of the child. As patrolmen on post and in the sector cars in the 21st rang in, the sergeant on TS gave each of them the description and told them to be on the lookout for the woman and the child. Not long afterwards, sector car number three responded to a radio call to meet the subway station agent in the 68th Street station of the Lexington Avenue local. There he is. In the booth. You call the precinct? Yeah. Wait a minute. I'll be right out. What's the trouble? Over here. Two passengers called her to my attention. Go on through. And I've been watching her. Thanks. As far as I know, she's been sitting there a couple of hours. Over there, on the bench. The woman with the baby. She's just been sitting there. Yeah. Okay. You can go on back if you want. We'll handle it. Oh, good. Thanks. Seems awful funny. Yeah. I'll see you. Uh, what was the name of the woman in that alarm? The one with the baby? Wagon? Yeah. In a wagon. Well, that could be her. Excuse me, lady. He's asleep. He woke up when an express passed a little while ago. I had a hard time getting him to go back. It's kind of late to be out with a baby, isn't it? He's all right. I take good care of him. If this train doesn't wake him up again, they make an awful lot of noise. Oh, this, uh, this isn't a nursery. It's a subway station. Guess it's not their fault. Are you Mrs. Wigan? What? Are you Mrs. Wigan? I still didn't hear you. I asked you if you were Mrs. Wigan. Yes, I'm Mrs. Wigan. Well, we've been looking for you. Oh, I guess Harry woke up and saw I was gone. Yeah, I guess he did. I don't want to give Richie up. I, I can't give him up. I've wanted him so long. You've no idea how long. Well, we'd better go into the station house and talk about it, Mrs. Wagon. Oh, do we have to? Yeah, we'd better. I'm not going to give him up. Look. He even smiles when he sleeps. He's never seen such a happy baby. He's so happy. Yeah, I guess he is. He won't be happy if they take him away from me. Nobody will be happy. Nobody. Oh, come on, Mrs. Wagner. What? Everything's so funny. He's hers and she doesn't want him. I want him and I can't have him. So funny. The two officers took Mrs. Wagner and the child upstairs to their car and drove them to the 21st. I had just returned from my tour of the division with the deputy police commissioner. I asked Mrs. Wigan to wait in my office. Then I instructed the desk officer to notify Mr. Wigan that his wife was at the station house. After a few minutes, I walked toward my office. Through the open door, I could see her holding the sleeping child tightly in her arms. She looked down at him fondly. Oh. 
Uh, is Harry coming? I uh, sent an officer around to tell him you were here. Oh. I think he really likes Richie. I, I don't understand him. I'll be out or in the kitchen or someplace, and I'll come in and find him playing with the baby, and he jumps away. Like he was caught stealing something. I don't understand him. He told me the mother is making a sucker out of him. Yes, he told me that too, but maybe it's not her fault. I, I don't see how anybody could help caring about Richie. Maybe she's sick or something. That could happen, couldn't it? Couldn't that be why she didn't send the money? Well, we'll find out. The detectives will start checking into it. Do they have to take him away from me? Can I keep until we find out something? According to the law, Mrs. Wagon, when a parent has agreed to pay for a child in a foster home and goes away without leaving an ascertainable address or continuing to arrange for board, the child is considered abandoned. I haven't abandoned him. I want him. Yes, but you see, he's not yours. It's up to the Department of Welfare to provide shelter for him. Can I keep him anyway? Well, there probably is. You can get your husband to agree to seek adoption. Harry. Not the way Harry feels. He wouldn't agree to anything. He likes the boy. You said that yourself. And he told me he did. Yes, I know. But he's so sore at Mrs. Heppel. He's so sorry he takes it out on Richie. And on me. She's... Oh. Excuse me. I thought he was stirring. Look. Like a log. He's really a good baby. And so happy. Yeah. Babies usually are if the person taking care of them is happy doing it. Yes, I know. I'm happy. I, I've been married all these years, and I've never been so happy. That's what I think may be the matter with Harry is. I think he's jealous. Imagine. Jealous of a little thing like this. Come in. Oh, come in, Mr. Wagon. Thanks. Should I close the door? Yes, please. Cora. Harry? Why did you have to run off like that, Cora? You scared me half to death. Half to death. I'm sorry, Harry. Sorry, you should be sorry. You wake him. You see, Captain, you see? That's all I get. You wake the baby. Don't play the television. Don't smoke my pipe. It's bad for him. We can't go to the movies. There's nobody to leave him with. Out of the twelve and a half dollars a week we didn't get, we have to pay for sitters. Harry. Too. My age, I gotta have an infant around. At my age, I don't need it. All I need is peace and quiet. Nobody thinks of me anymore. All right, Harry. I'm going to give him back. The welfare department does something with them. You'll have your peace and quiet. Do you want to take him now, Captain? Well, uh, it's late, Mrs. Wagon. Uh, why don't you go home with him? You have all his things there. We'll make arrangements in the morning. No, I can't take him home. I want to leave him right here, right now. I can do that, can't I? Well, I'll have to get a policewoman up here to take him to the New York Foundling Home. Now, look, Cora, don't be stubborn. We have to lose the whole night's sleep. Got to be at work at 8 o'clock. Let's go home. You can get the whole thing straightened out tomorrow. I'm not taking this baby in my house again. Not unless I take him there to stay. I'm not. Now, you got your way, didn't you? What else do you want from me? You could at least try to make it a little easy on me. Hi. I'm ashamed of you. You don't know what you put me through. You don't realize how much I love you to do this for you. Cora, honey, cut it out. I won't cut it out. You don't know a brain in your head, no one brain. Yeah, I guess maybe I haven't. Captain, I... I guess I'm a loss. Are you? Yeah, I know I am. I want to admit to you right here and now that that Mrs. Heppel has sent me twelve and a half dollars every week to the place where I work, every week. Is that so? Hmm. You're not kidding? No. No, I'm not kidding. The baby's paid up today, paid up. What did you do with the money? Well, I... I got admitted, Cora. I got admitted. I, I spent every last cent. Playing the ponies. Every last cent. But, but she's been right on the button every Monday morning in the mail with a twelve fifty. In cash, it came in a plain envelope. From where was that postmark? Postmark? Well, what do you mean, postmark? Well, where were they mailed from? Oh. Oh, from, from all over. You, 
She's in traveling. Can we keep him now, Captain? Can we? Well, if the board bill is paid up under the law, the baby hasn't been abandoned. That's wonderful, Harry. Just what? You spent that money on the horses? Well, yeah. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. The baby's money on the horses. Cora, you, uh, you never heard from the mother, did you? How you gonna win, Captain? You just can't win. Well, at least one thing. In a marriage, you can't do any worse than come in second. Go on. Catch up with her. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. What do you mean, you were robbed? Oh, broke into your apartment. But so where is this? And so it goes, around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department city of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Canelli. Featured in tonight's cast were Wendell Holmes, Ralph Camargo, George Petrie, Juan Hernandez, Bill Lipton, Randall Kramer, and Els Pateric. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking.